Hey everyone, Daniel here. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about Microsoft's WinHEC 2016 conference where they announced Windows 10 x86 emulation on ARM. I think that this is really big news. So I wanted to break that down and then talk a little bit about what I think it means. So let's break down that statement there, Windows 10 x86 emulation on ARM. So Windows 10 x86, Windows 10 is of course the operating Windows 10, x86 refers to the architecture that these, uh, that Windows 10 is running on. So this is most computers that people are familiar of, this is the version of Windows that uh, works on the, Intel, that Intel chips and AMD chips are built upon and so, of course, Windows is running on that architecture as well. So this is what's in your desktops and your laptops and even devices like the Surface. Uh, let's jump to the end of that statement, ARM. So ARM is a different architecture. These are the, this is the architecture that phones and tablets are built upon. This is what these processors are called. They're called ARM chips. It's a different architecture than x86 chips. And so uh, they're just, they're built differently, essentially. And so emulation means, well, in a literal sense, to emulate, to imitate, or to copy. So if we put those all together, it, it means the x86 version of Windows 10 being emulated on ARM processors. And that's huge news. So of course, there, up until now, there have been versions of Windows that run on ARM, of course Windows Phone and now Windows 10 Mobile runs on ARM. It is a version of Windows that is for phones. Uh, when Windows 8 initially launched, we had Windows RT which ran on an ARM press processor but that rightfully so got a lot of flack for not being very good. So. That's what Microsoft announced, and they also announced it in conjunction with Qualcomm. So just like how Microsoft has a partnership, they work with Intel and AMD to get Windows running uh, better on, so it's working well on their processors. Microsoft announced along with Qualcomm that uh, starting next year in 2017, uh, with the Snapdragon 835 processor, you'll have Windows 10 x86 emulation on ARM. And so how are they doing this? Uh, they haven't really said, and I doubt we'll ever get specifics on the matter, especially considering uh, Microsoft's competitors very much wanna know how they're getting Windows to run on ARM. Um, I guess it's some sort of uh, hardware emulation. You, of course, have to make Windows, the x86 version of Windows, you have to make it think that it's running on x86 architecture. So there's, I assume, some sort of wrapper being put on Windows to uh, facilitate the communication of the processes, making it think it's uh, x86, and then actually going through the ARM uh, architecture of the ARM, the architect, the, the language that the ARM architecture uses. So I assume there's some sort of communication like wrapper layer for the emulation of the entire OS uh, to be working there. That's just my guess. I don't know too much about emulation beyond uh, like game emulation. So for example, uh, the Xbox One to, in order to emulate, to have the backwards compatibility with Xbox 360 games, the Xbox One S is emulating the entire Xbox 360 console so that it can then run the Xbox 360 games on there. So I imagine, uh, my guess is that it's uh, some sort of a similar process uh, there. And of course, ARM processors uh, haven't been powerful enough up until now for this to be possible. So with this uh, coming new 800 level Snapdragon processor, Microsoft feels like uh, that's enough horsepower to make this happen and happen well. So ultimately, why are Microsoft doing this? I feel like that this is a part of Microsoft's one OS strategy of one Windows. 
So they, ha like I said, they've had Windows on ARM before, but that didn't work well uh, as a whole or commercially either. People didn't want that because with Windows RT, when they first launched Windows 8 on the original Surface RT and the Surface 2, it was critically panned because while it was the same user interface as Windows 8, you had a desktop, all that jazz, you couldn't actually download and run desktop programs. And that was very confusing to consumers. And many people asked, why would I want this? Because uh, back then the Windows Store was very new, not very many apps on there. And then you have uh, Windows phones as well, but that is of course, I mean, while it is still a version, it had, the core of it is still Windows, um, it's a phone, uh, so calling it Windows, it's like, okay, I can run these apps on here, but it's known as Windows, why doesn't it work like Windows for me? Uh, so ultimately, Microsoft wants this 1OS strategy so in order to get there, they need to have uh, to bring these pieces together. So that's a big reason of why they're doing this. Uh, on the hardware side of things, this will be able to drive down the prices of Windows devices that you would consider an actual Windows device, not a uh, handicapped thing like the like a surface RT so uh, when it comes to the prices of these processors that companies are that manufacturers are buying them from to from the makers to put them into their uh, computers Intel of course is the major provider of these processors so the lowest level processor available is the Atom which uh, manufacturers pay around uh, like 30 to $50 per chip I believe but of course you have very uh, limited usefulness of an Atom processor it's not capable of doing much the next step up from that is a Core M processor which is I don't remember the exact number, but uh, it's somewhere between $200 and $300 per chip. I want to say it's actually closer to $300 per chip. That is a lot of money. That's going to drive up the price of your device. That's why uh, Chromebooks are very popular because they are so incredibly cheap and they're using ARM processors. A Snapdragon 800 level uh, processor costs of uh, it is believed to cost around seventy dollars so that is significantly less than a core m processor from intel so if windows 10 x86 emulation on arm on this snapdragon 835 if it can come anywhere if it is closer to a core m in performance than it is an atom processor at that significantly reduced price is huge and that's literally savings that will be passed on to you and me those of us that are buying these computers so that's huge if it has that level of performance and so at first these devices these uh, emulated devices that will come out they'll still be on the high end this is of course the first generation of this and so it's going to require a lot of, of course, you know, I mean, it's implied right there with it being only on the high level, out of the gate, first generation Snapdragon, this, you know, 800 level Snapdragon processor. So this is obviously something that's only going to be on the high end of devices at the uh, outset. So I believe we'll only see this in like tablets uh, two-in-ones and like laptops but because theoretically you won't have to put any cooling in these devices because these ARM processors are so so much more uh, less power hungry than a traditional computer chip you don't necessarily you don't really need uh, uh, active cooling so you don't need fans they just passively cool themselves uh, through like the device you don't need any uh, mechanical bits to cool these processors so you can get 
like an ultra book level thin device, but at a price point that is much less. So now I believe like a pretty good Ultrabook starts at like 700, maybe $800. You can imagine the ultra, new Ultrabooks uh, coming in with these Snapdragon processors at only like $500. If you get that down to $500, you're talking like mid-range laptop price point. That is huge if you can get such a high quality, very thin device. And so I think that will be a huge change for the computer market. And then of course, you know, people want tablets. They want to have these thin and light devices. If you can get a tablet that's full windows for such a cheap price and you don't have to deal with, you know, an Atom processor, because right now if you want a cheap Windows tablet, it's gonna come with an Atom, but if you're gonna get close to a Core M level of performance from these Snapdragons running Windows, that's huge. This is also gonna be huge uh, for schools as well, because I think, I believe I mentioned before, the Chromebooks, that's very big with uh, education with schools, uh, specifically public schools, where they have, <clears throat> excuse me, these droves of devices you know, for, for the students in classrooms to use. Uh, but of course, Chromebooks are very limiting in what they can and can't do because it's essentially just a web browser. Um, so if these schools, institutions can buy Windows devices at close to the same price, I think that would be much more desirable, both from usability, what they can uh, have the students do on the computers in the classroom, but also from, of course, the uh, management side uh, because it's Windows, so the IT department will uh, be much happier to put their, uh, they have much higher level, I mean, it's Windows, so there's much higher level of accessibility and uh, management options on the IT side for the, uh, for departments other than compared to a Chromebook. But of course, this ultimately leads to uh, phones. ARM processors are, are of course in phones. So does that mean the eventual Surface phone will be using not Windows Mobile, but Windows x86 emulation? And I believe it will. I believe that this is what an eventual Surface phone will be like when it comes out. It will be a new category of device. That is what Surface is all about after all. Uh, it's either creating something new or introducing new elements into something we are already familiar with and doing it very well. We saw that very uh, recently, of course, with the Surface Studio. All-in-one computers weren't necessarily uh, a new thing, but Microsoft put a new spin on it and uh, made it a new device, essentially. And I think that's what they're going to do with the Surface Phone. I think it will be a three-in-one device. And so we technically already have the first three-in-one uh, from HP called the Elite X3. This is a six-inch, essentially a smartphone running Windows 10 Mobile. Um, and then HP also sells a dock that you can put it to, uh, connect a monitor and whatnot, and then using the continual mode of Windows 10 Mobile, you get a, a light desktop experience, but like Windows RT before, you're not getting really a full Windows experience because with the Elite X3, in order to use desktop applications, you have to then essentially remote into a server and use the desktop applications through there. So you still have to have uh, an elaborate backend to use desktop applications with the Elite X3. That wouldn't be the case with a phone running Windows 10 x86 emulated. You would have a full Windows device uh, and instead of the desktop being the continuum of experience, it would kind of be working the reverse where the device is always one running the desktop version of Windows, but when you have it as just the phone, uh, you're getting the phone interface in that mode. So it's kind of like a reverse continuum or just essentially what they will probably call continuum for that kind of device. So with a theoretical device of the sort, this, this three-in-one device that's running 
the same version of Windows. I think that'll be huge uh, for businesses because businesses are very much on board with the Elite X3. They like the idea of only having to use uh, one device for their employee because businesses, uh, they assign phones and computers to their employees to use. Uh, so that's, ma that's multiple devices that they have to buy and that their IT department has to uh, manage and keep track of. If they can only do one device per person, they would jump on board in a second. And that's already being uh, talked about with the Elite X3. A lot of companies are liking what HP ha is offering in the Elite X3. So a device where everything is just on the device, it is the Windows device. Um, that would be huge. And I think with Microsoft's sp uh, spin on being a primarily enterprise company, while then also being like a high-end consumer or prosumer on the other side, when it comes to their consumer devices, uh, I think uh, a Surface phone that's running full Windows will take off on a business size and that will be enough to say support a consumer side for the phone as well. So I think for those of us that are fans of Microsoft and are have been lusting over a theoretical Surface phone for years, I think that this will make it possible. And uh, ultimately at the end of the day, it'll be interesting to see where it go where it branches out from there because <clears throat> I think this is the this had to have been the inevitability for Microsoft uh, and part of a way this is a this is hopefully f what they hope uh, this is what x86 Windows on arm is what Microsoft's hope is simply a stopgap so s sure yes this plays into one Windows, one Windows across all devices, which is ultimately Microsoft's goal. But what that version of Windows looks like isn't a sure thing because what Microsoft wants, so this, so this is theoretically the first step in Microsoft's uh, goal. The, the next step is what they hope is that uh, Windows Universal platform apps take off and x86 apps fall completely by the wayside and then everyone is using uwp apps and with all windows 10 devices capable of supporting uwp apps uh that takes off and this x86 emulation stuff falls by the wayside and they never have to worry about it again uh, but with this being a stopgap, because so many people are still using x86 apps it's possible that if UWP apps never take off, um, that this becomes the de facto version of Windows. So as ARM chips become even more and more prolific with more devices using ARM chips, at least Microsoft has a version of Windows, full Windows that will run on uh, ARM devices so that everyone that is still using x86 apps can uh, get their apps on their Windows devices. Because ultimately what Microsoft wants is people using Windows devices and that's why they want one version of Windows on that is capable of running on any device. I saw this coming when Microsoft initially announced Windows 8 in summer of 2011, I think it was. I saw their vision. I knew that they were working towards one OS on all devices. And this is obviously the next step towards that. Microsoft wants it so that when a person walks into a store, all they think about, all they have to think about is how they want to interact with the device. So input methods, do you want a traditional mouse keyboard? Do you want a keyboard trackpad? Do you want a touch device, pen, etc.? And how big of a screen you want. That's what the end goal is here. Uh, that's all someone should have to think about when they're buying a Windows device. They shouldn't have to think about what apps it can run, what it can't run things like that. It's like, oh, can this do Photoshop? I don't know. What Windows RT? What's ARM? I don't understand what any of this means. They don't want that. They want it so that it's one Windows device. 
If, it ha is, if it's running Windows, it is Windows. So that's all they, that is their goal in announcing Windows 10 x86 on ARM is to, is this a uh, next step in eventually reaching this one Windows goal. And I think this is going to be huge over the next few years for Microsoft. And I think by 2018, uh, the current rumor is of course that uh, we might not see a Surface phone in 2017. That might be pushed back to 2018. Uh, I very much think by 2018, 100% we will see a three-in-one device. We will see phones running Windows 10. And so you just take that phone, you dock it, boom, that is your computer. Everything else is just an accessory. I fully believe that this is going to happen. And I do believe that this is the future of computers. And this is a huge news. This is the next step in that goal. And I can't wait to see what happens. Uh, if you think the same, let me know in the comments below. If you think otherwise, let me know what you think. Uh, I also wanted to give an update on my channel here for those that have stuck around for this long, because we're going on for a little uh, around 20 minutes now. Uh, so going forward, I'm going to try to release tentatively uh, a video every two weeks. Uh, I know that I'm pretty sporadic in my videos because I work and I'm a student. So, you know, I kind of only do this when I can as much as I enjoy doing it. And then of course, when I'm buying products, I'm doing that out of my own pocket. So I kind of have to pick and choose what I'm buying and therefore reviewing. Uh, but my goal here over my winter break is to produce a bunch of videos and then release a new video every two weeks. And if you saw my channel recently, I did an unboxing for some Pokemon Evolutions cards. Uh, I plan on alternating between technology and Pokemon videos for the next few months. And I know some people started following me because of those videos. I had a lot of fun doing them. So I want to continue to do some of those. So this will count uh, as my technology video for the month of December. And then going forward, I'm going to try to do one technology video every month and then a Pokemon opening every month, at least for the foreseeable future. We'll see how that goes. Uh, if there are specific products that you want me to look at or uh, technology or Pokemon or otherwise, let me know. Uh, but thank you all for watching. Be sure to stay tuned and I'll see you in my next video.